Hello everyone. Uh, in this part, in this video, we are going to see the digestive glands. In the earlier videos, already we have completed the structure of the human digestive system, where we have completed the first part of the digestive gland also, that is the salivary glands. So, first part already we have discussed, that is the salivary gland. So, uh, once again, I will recall uh, so that you can remember once it again that in our mouth, in our buccal cavity, we are going to have three pairs of salivary glands. The largest salivary gland is the parotid gland, which basically release the enzyme that is the salivary amylase. The another name of salivary amylase is styrene, which is helping in the digestion of the starch. Next, the second salivary gland, which is present in the junction of both the two jaws on either side. This is known as the submaxillary or submandibular gland. And the third gland, which is the smallest gland present, which is present on the floor of the buccal cavity, that is known as the sublingual gland. So all these three glands together will release the saliva and along with that it will have the water, maximum it will have the water and little amount of the mucus that is also present. So that is the salivary glands already we have discussed the ducts, the name of the ducts are very much important. Second thing, their secretion, the pH, the function of the salivary amylase, all these things, these are very much important, it is needed also. Uh, next one, after that we need to know the other glands. So after the stomach, we will move to the next part that is the uh, uh, buccal cavity. After the buccal cavity, we have the pharynx. So in the pharynx region, there is no such gland present. Then after that, we will go to the esophagus region. Remember one thing that this esophagus will not have any uh, digestive juice of itself. The food that is mixing with the saliva or salivary amylase that will continue on digesting in the region of the esophagus. So because of esophagus or esophageal any glands, the digestion of starch will not occur. The food that is already been mixed with the salivary amylase that will continue on digestion in the region of the esophagus. Then after that it will go to the next part that is the stomach region. So in the stomach region, uh, the glands I have already already written here all of it so just see one thing that if you see the lining of the stomach already I have given the transverse section the histology of the elementary candle where we have seen the outermost layer suppose this is the outermost layer remember the name of the outermost layer that is called as the serosa second layer the middle layer that is known as the muscularis layer where outer longitudinal and inner circular muscle is there so that is the muscularis layer. Then after that, the third layer, the third layer is named as the submucosa layer. Okay. So the third layer is the submucosa, right? And the innermost layer, which is known as the mucosa layer. Okay, right? So in this mucosa, what we are going to have the different uh, digestive glands. So this is the mucosa layer. So remember that this mucosa actually we have seen. Okay. So this mucosa layer. So this is the mucosa. This is the mucosa. Just above that, some mucosa is there. Then after that, just above this muscularis layer is there, and just above that, serosa layer is present. One thing, just remember that uh, normally all of the digestive glands, they are present in the mucosa layer. This is the lumen, right? So this is the mucosa. On the lining of the mucosa, we are going to have almost all kinds of uh, digestive glands. But there is one exception. What is that? The submucosa. Normally, the submucosa will not have glands. But yes, the submucosa have one digestive gland remember that is known as the Brunner's gland okay so where this Brunner's gland is present this is present in the duodenum region okay right remember that normally this mucosa have almost all kinds of digestive glands the exception is the submucosa where one digestive gland is present which is releasing the enzymes that is known as the Brunner's gland and the Brunner's gland is present in the submucosa layer. Remember that this is a very very much important point to remember. 
Now let's just move to the uh, yeah what we are discussing the salivary glands right here. Okay, and after that we will see the liver, pancreas, then glands of the intestine. All of this uh, we will see. First of all, we will see that here in this mucosa region, have you seen some small, small uh, branch-like structures are there, tubular structures are here. So those tubular structures, they are nothing but actually the gastric gland. So here we have seen the gastric gland. So only one uh, part, only one small gland we are taking and we are going to see what actually those cells present, right? So first of all, just see here the lining, here on this line here and here also what we are going to have the goblet cells okay so here also here also we are going to have the goblet cells then another layer another name of goblet cell that is known as the mucosa cell right so this goblet cell and or the mucosa cell which is the unicellular gland remember that uh, already in the tissue chapter already we have discussed that the mucosa or the goblet cells these are the only single cell the gland which release the mucus right so remember that this is the mucosa or the goblet cells these are the goblet cells which release the mucus and what is the function of the mucus see in the stomach region we have a very highly concentrated acid hydrochloric acid is present so that hydrochloric acid so that can not uh, hurt or damage the layer of the stomach so that's why this mucus layer will always present covering lining the wall of the stomach so that will help actually in the protection of the stomach lining from hydrochloric acid that is very very much uh, concentrated now after that you can see on the outer layer outer cells outer see here this is the tubular glands right on the outside what we have the next type of glands next type of cells present so what is that cell that is known as the oxyntic cell or parietal cell remember this oxyntic or the parietal cell they will release two things one is the hydrochloric acid and another is the castle intrinsic factor very much important what is the function of hydrochloric acid c this hydrochloric acid will have the ph of 1.2 to 1.5 which is very very much uh, acidic if you just take one drop of hydrochloric uh, acid in a finger then to leave your bone and uh, that part you can see it is that much concentrated so uh, then how is it possible in the stomach region we can have this 1.5 uh, uh, that uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid and it is not going to harm your gastric layer because here what we have the goblet cells because these goblet cells will release this mucus which will make a layer around the uh, stomach lining right so that's why it is not going to harm at all so the next one see oxyntic cell or this parietal cell which is releasing the hydrochloric acid of 1.2 to 1.5 ph that will actually give the ph that pH is very much necessary for the activation of the enzymes. So here we have some cells, uh, those cells will release the enzymes, but those enzymes actually release in the inactivated cell, inactivated stage. So that this inactivated enzyme can be converted into activated enzyme. So that's why they require the pH 1.2 to 1.5. So that's why what happened, this hydrochloric acid is released from the oxyntic cell or the parietal cell. So what is the function? It will provide the pH. Next one, it will kill the germ and it will activate the enzyme. So what is the, active, what is the enzyme? That is pepsinogen, then prorenin okay so this pepsinogen that is the inactivated state which will be converted into pepsin by the action of hydrochloric acid next one the proranin which will be converted into renin with the help of this hydrochloric acid so remember that next one see this same oxyntic cell or parietal cell it will release also one very important factor that is known as the castle intrinsic factor remember this castle intrinsic factor that will help in the absorption of vitamin b12 
Normally, the vitamins ions they are absorbed in the region of large intestine in the stomach because hydrochloric uh, sorry because this castle intrinsic factor is released from the parietal cell or occipital cell it will help in the absorption of vitamin B12. Remember that this is a very very much important line you need to remember. Okay, so what is that? That castle intrinsic factor will help in the absorption of vitamin B12. Sometimes due to the damage of this oxyntic cell or the parietal cell that will not able to release this castle intrinsic factor and because of that the absorption of vitamin B12 will not be possible. And if vitamin B12 is not able to be absorbed then uh, yeah, vitamin B12 is very very much important for the RBC production in the hemoglobin uh, pro uh, formation. So our body will have a lack of hemoglobin in the blood so that can cause anemia. So this is a very important uh, point to remember. The main or the chief cell that is the gastric cells that help in the digestion of protein that actually is released from a cell that is known as the chief cell. Here the chief cell which is present towards the base that is also known as gymosenic cell, C, uh, chief cell or the peptic cell. So this peptic cell or the chief cell or the gymosenic cell that will release the three, horm uh, three enzymes that is pepsinogen that will be converted into pepsin, prorenin that will be converted into renin and mild gastric lipase. So uh, what is the function? It will help in the digestion of protein. If it is the pepsinogen that uh, help in digestion of the normal protein which is released in the adult. Next one, prorenin which will be activated into renin with the help of this uh, pepsin uh, that reaction I will tell you that prorenin that will be actually released only in case of the infant mammals so that it can help in the digestion of the milk protein that is casein. So in case of the adults this prorenin or this renin that will not be present only in case of the uh, infants the babies they will release this prorenin which will be in turn activated into renin which will help in the casein protein found in the milk. Next one, mild gastric lipase, which will help in digestion of very little amount of, uh, very little less amount of lipid in the stomach. Otherwise, the chief uh, digestion of lipid occurs in the intestine, small intestine region. Next one, see the another cell which is present towards the bottom that is known as the argentafin cell, very much important, which is releasing one very important factor that is called as the serotonin. So uh, you already know the function of serotonin. If you can remember the connective tissue, I have told already you that this serotonin that is released from the uh, cell that is basophil which is releasing heparin, histamine and serotonin. So this serotonin is a vasoconstrictor. So this serotonin in the stomach region will help in the constriction of the smooth muscle so that the activation of the uh, uh, stomach lining can occur. Okay, so this serotonin will help in the contraction of the muscles that is smooth muscle present in the stomach region. Next one towards the base we have have one cell that is called as a G cell very much important because this G cell will release a hormone here what is that gastrin hormone this gastrin hormone will stimulate all of the other cell how this oxyntic cell will release the hydrochloric acid whenever it gets the gastrin so this G cell will understand the uh, when to activate or when to release any of the enzymes or any of the secretion so G cell for the first time will release gastrin hormone it will activate all of the the other cells and all of the other cells will uh, release their respective form, uh, enzymes whenever it is needed and at the base we have the basal cell or the stem cell it is also called as the stem cell so this basal cell or the stem cell that will produce the uh, uh, that that will produce or they will form any of the other cell if any of the reasons due to any of the reasons some of the cells suppose destroy or this uh, they suppose degenerated then the stem cell or the basal cell will form uh, all of the 
other type of cells right so these are the basal cell i hope you understand this uh, types of cells so this is a very much important point to remember so this thing you have to make a note this is all about the gastric glands in the next video we will discuss about the liver pancreas and after that we will see the cells of the intestine so yeah that is all about the gastric glands uh, that's all about the video i hope you understand thank you